Hello, my fellow project managers. Your buddy Phil here. I know lots of you are preparing for interviews, so I wanted to give you some first-hand experience on how I would answer interview questions by you being a fly on the wall in this mock interview that I'm going through with the HR director asking me questions. I am going for an IT software project manager position, and these questions are very, in my mind, they, they can be tricky. They can throw you off. So uh, if you haven't prepared effectively for an IT software PM interview, you want to listen up and go through these questions and see how many of these you can answer um, as readily or or if they'll keep you stammering and stuttering. They're quite, uh, they're, they're quite tough for someone who has not been in this kind of position before. So anyway, let's uh, get rolling and um, let's listen in. Come to this interview. Okay. I have a few questions for you. How would you manage a project with multiple competing deadlines and limited team members? Thank you for the question. If I was managing a project with multiple competing deadlines and limited team members, the first thing I would do is to address the aspect of the multiple competing deadlines. My perspective to deadlines is they have to be prioritized. So first and foremost, I would want to understand the priority of those deadlines. And the way I prioritize deadlines are by a number of factors such as the value that that deadline has or is connected to regarding the organization or regarding my immediate boss. I'd also want to prioritize based on risk, based on the urgency, and based on the cost of delaying such a deadline any further. So once I understand which deadlines are which in terms of priority, the next thing I would think of is the team members and the resources. If I have limited team members, I would want them to work truly as a team because I believe that as a team, one can get a lot more done than just trying to do everything piecemeal or focusing on the power of one team member without focusing on the power of the synergistic team, so to speak. Once I understand these dynamics about skills that the team members have and how they can help each other to give a more robust output, I would then begin working on a detailed project management plan that enables me to clearly define the tasks, the deadlines, the dependencies. I would definitely create a milestone chart. I would also get buy-in from the team regarding these dependencies and deadlines, also buy-in from my stakeholders. And then taking my already prioritized list, I would then prioritize the tasks and allocate the resources accordingly. I would also communicate this to stakeholders to keep them updated on status. And if any challenges arise, I would be proactive in identifying and mitigating those challenges. And I would also have a risk register to make sure that whatever risks are detected in the early stages are tracked all the way through to mitigate and manage them accordingly. That's what I would do. Another question. Um, how would you deal with a difficult stakeholder who was constantly changing their mind and making unrealistic demands? Thank you for the question. To be quite honest, my perspective is different from a lot of other people's when it comes to, in quote, difficult stakeholders. Not to negate the fact that they are not stakeholders that one might generally refer to as being difficult, but I believe that every stakeholder should be given a chance. I believe that uh, every stakeholder should be looked at as someone who can add value and someone who value should be given to. So 
for me, it starts off with my mindset. Tune in my mindset. I have a motto. I say every stakeholder is an ally or potential ally until proven otherwise. And then it's your job as a project manager to win them over, to get them on the same page. So that's my overarching philosophy. And as a result of my philosophy, um, I would then try to understand the stakeholders' concerns. I would try to understand why they are making the changes that they are making or the requests that they are making. There's something we say in project management, which is stakeholder engagement, is communicating with the stakeholder and working with them. So I would work with the stakeholder, not against them, but with them to develop a realistic plan that meets their needs. And if the stakeholder is still making demands that one may feel is unreasonable, I would probably at that point escalate the issue. But that would be the last resort because I generally do not like escalating issues as a project manager. I like to get down to the bottom of why this is happening. And I believe that with dialogue and with patience, a lot of misunderstandings can be ironed out. So um, my first go-to is dialogue, real solid dialogue. Um, and my philosophy, which is everyone is doing the best they can with what they have has helped me through my experience as a project manager. I have uh, not given up on any of my stakeholders. I've not had to escalate issues beyond the normal level to bring other people involved as a second voice, a second opinion. So my first go-to would be open dialogue and uh, really just staying in there with the stakeholder to unravel things. I like how you answer that question. Um, company is always changing and technology is always evolving. How would you manage the risk of a new technology being used on a project? Thank you for the question. So as an experienced IT project manager, risk is everywhere when it comes to technology. You either have the risk of the technology not fitting the business, or you have the risk of the technology acting in ways, emergent ways that you did not predict would happen before you implemented it. And you also have the risk of in the future, the technology not just being a good fit with the overarching infrastructure. So in my mind, the best way that one should manage risk is to identify the risks, to bring everyone to the table. Um, and that is everyone, the developers, the stakeholders, the customer. And it starts off with you having a plan for risk. So in the world of project management, we talk about having a risk management plan. You need to first of all plan before the project even begins, how are we gonna manage risk? When you have decided how to manage risk, what tools and methods and practices to apply, and you've decided the frequency of risk meetings and risk dialogue, then you can begin identifying the risks with your team, with your development team, with your security team. And uh, I advocate assessing the risks associated with the new technology by using the C, um, R, and E which is the cause, risk, and effect model from the PMI. So I advocate not just identifying risks and saying, oh, this is a risk that could happen, but actually identifying the cause of the risk and also identifying uh, uh, the effect. So cause, risk, and effect is what I would recommend. I would then develop, based on the risks, I would then develop a plan that would be centered on doing some qualitative risk analysis, doing the mental, if not a physical, quantitative risk analysis to kind of weigh what the impact of this risk could be. So I'll do that. And then I would, with the team, develop a risk response plan. It may not just be mitigation, but it could be avoidance, it could be transference, it could be escalations. Um, and that would include things like training the team, contingency plans if need be, fallback plans, 
where I may have accepted a risk with the team. And then I would also closely monitor the project to identify any potential risks much earlier on. So, you know, risk is very big, but I would pretty much follow the steps of plan the risk management, identify the risks, do a qualitative or quantitative as well analysis, uh, plan the risk responses, and, and then implement the responses and keep tracking and monitor those risks all through. That's what I would do. So much for that answer. How would you handle a situation where a team member is not performing adequately? Thank you for the question. Well, if I had a team member that was not performing adequately, I, I would first ask myself the question, have I equipped this team member to function to the optimum in this position? And if the question is no, then I would meet with the team member to discuss their performance and then come up with a, a plan to enhance their knowledge and their abilities. But if they have received training, then the meeting would be more to discuss their performance and identify areas of improvement and then develop a performance improvement plan. It would have specific goals for the team member and milestones. I would also provide regular feedback. I would provide support to the team member if the team member is still not meeting the expectations. And I would stop at nothing to help elevate that team member. If possible, provide more mentoring and coaching depending on what the performance concern is. If it's a technical performance concern, I would definitely get them the help they need technically. If it is a people or behavioral performance concern, then I would definitely work with them and get them the additional help they need. Thank you so much for that answer. How would you communicate with a non-technical audience about the process of a software project? Great question. I've had to do this in previous employments and I delight in making difficult subjects simple. So if I was working with a stakeholder on a software implementation project, for example, and I needed to communicate to them the process or the progress, I would use very clear and concise language that is easy to understand. I generally would avoid using any jargon um, and technical terms. I would focus on communicating what is key, like the key milestones, the key deliverables, any challenges or risks that may be impacting the project will be communicated with very clear and concise language. And then I would also use the visuals. I believe a picture is worth a thousand words. So what may take tons and tons of jargon to talk about, I would rather just show an image, show a schematic, show a wireframe, show something that would help the customer just understand as quickly as possible. It's really nicely said. Um, we are always using a new square and always uh, coming up with different ways to manage our company. How would you manage the testing of a complex software project? Thank you for the question. I have had to do this in a previous employment. Um, while I was at Honeywell IT Effectiveness, I had to not only coordinate the testing activities, I was also the final test man in our test runs. So when I had to manage the testing of a complex software endeavor involving a lot of entities, what I first of all did was plan out the test. So have a test plan. And the test plan could be looked at phase by phase. You could either look at testing a module. You could look at testing uh, by phase. You could look at testing the entire thing. But what we did was test each module. So I would, first of all, create that comprehensive test plan that covers the different aspects of the software by module. Then I would write along with the team, as I have done in the past, very comprehensive test scripts to test each arm of the module. 
again, with very comprehensive steps that each test should carry out. I actually assigned these test scripts to different team members or different testers, and they would have to test these items according to the test script and according to the use case and make sure that it really works. So after tracking these scripts and running the test, pretty much track the progress, I would look at each test as a task to be done, and I would look for the results. I would review the test results to identify if there were any defects, and if there were any defects, they would be escalated back to the development team for them to fix. I would also work with the testers to better understand the behaviors of the system in cases where there were behaviors that were out of the norm. I would work with the testers and the uh, developers to fix those uh, defects. But all in all, it starts off with having a plan, following the plan, having very good test scripts that cover the full gamut of what needs to be tested and doing various kinds of testing, not just doing the regular user tests, but also doing um, any other tests that need to happen, uh, load testing and things such as that. Very nicely said. While testing of a complex, would you ensure software meets the needs of the users? Great question. So we generally in the world of software believe in getting the testers, especially in the world of Agile, getting the testers and the users involved really early. So the users should be part of the requirements gathering process. On a previous project I worked on, I had 127 different needs that the users wanted in the system. And the way I did it, first of all, had a requirements traceability matrix to make sure that we captured all the needs of the stakeholders, all the needs of the users. And then once you've captured the needs of the users, you've got to involve them all through the development process, not just at the end when you believe that you've done uh, good work in development, but all through the process. I would conduct user interviews, surveys, uh, usability testing to get their feedback. I strongly believe in uh, user acceptance testing. That is big because the people who would be using the system are the ones you want to involve very heavily in testing. I would also, to that end, work with the team to develop the user acceptance criteria using things like given when then, using a format that makes the test results uh, accessible so that everyone understands what is being tested, what the user acceptance criteria is, and uh, working to uh, deliver a final product that meets uh, that criteria. Would you manage the change from progress to race project? Oh, thank you for the question. It's a kind of catch-22 question, because change control is a word that uh, is generally associated with traditional projects, predictive projects. But that is not to say that change control cannot be used as a word uh, in the world of Agile as well. So what I would do as an IT project manager is to create a change management plan as far as how changes would be not only captured, but how they would go through the process. So I'd create a change control process that clearly defines the steps that need to be taken to approve any changes. For example, you may have a verbal change requests. Well, what are you going to do? They should be documented right, as much as possible. Uh, you want to document those requests. Then you want to do an analysis of those requests with your developers. Then if it needs to be escalated to higher powers for them to decide if that change will be approved or not, then you would do that. Then you would document the changes. And if those changes were approved, then you would implement the change. I would also uh, suggest a change control board, like on a very large project, multi-million project. Uh, it's very helpful to have a change control board. And they are responsible for reviewing and approving changes that may be of a particular nature, a particular threshold, uh, where there's no change control board, formal change control board. I would look to create at least a forum 
with stakeholders and a sponsor to decide on uh, the change control because it may sound a little bit overkill but having a change control process whether you're in the world of traditional or agile is is very much needed so that would be my process you got to define the steps put together a change board and just follow the process no matter what uh, different ways of measuring how would you measure the success based on where would you Thank you for the question. Uh, in my mind, it boils down to just a handful of whole things. Uh, I often say success is in the eye of the beholder. Success is in the eye of the stakeholder, right? So no matter how good I feel about my team's work, it also boils down to the stakeholder's impression and the stakeholder's perception. So I measure success on a software project primarily based on end user, customer, stakeholder satisfaction, and not just the immediate satisfaction of the stakeholder today. I would look at the success based on the long haul. So when I come back two months later, three months later, am I going to get a congruent response from the stakeholder? Am I gonna get the stakeholder and the customer and the end users still been raving fans even after the passage of time because that dictates to me the success. Success is based on a number of things. Value is also one. So based on the stakeholders' perception of value that they get in from the software, that's also success. So if the stakeholder feels, what a waste of time, this was not good, that's not success. But if the stakeholder after some months feels, this is great, this product holds up, it has helped us reduce uh, cycle time by X, Y, Z. It has helped us increase revenues by this amount. Then I would say that success uh, has been achieved. So the, the summary is this, right? The success of a project is based on so many factors, but we look at the stakeholders' happiness and perception. We look at the reduction of a process cycle time. We look at metrics such as defect rates, um, customer satisfaction surveys, user adoption rates is a big one because if the user adoption rate is low, it tells me that they would rather use what they have always had. Um, but then again, uh, to bring another point of reason to this, we also have the benefits that need to be sold to the end users. Otherwise, they're not going to use the system. So the adoption rate could end up being a little bit low if it's the software is not sold properly to the end user. So it's many factors, but I think the one that trumps everything else is the stakeholder satisfaction, the end user satisfaction, and then we can look at other metrics such as defect rates, customer satisfaction surveys, user adoption rates, and things such as that. How would you prepare for a software project launch? Great question. So in my mind, um, the best way to prepare for a launch is to, first of all, have a roadmap, a product roadmap for your endeavor. And the product roadmap is not um, a one-time uh, thing that happens. The, the product roadmap is continuous, so it bends and morphs and changes all throughout the timeline. So my, in my mind, the product owner, the product manager, whoever that is, I would like to work with them on building a roadmap that shows the necessary things that need to happen, the releases, the features within that release, and then support endeavors such as marketing, communication strategies, training for the users, contingency plans, and things of that nature. And I would also work with my development team to ensure that the software is ready for uh, each release. Um, if this is referring to just one release out of many, um, it would be the same thing. But if this is referring to a launch, uh, maybe like the first of many releases or all the releases combined, it would 
make no difference because all of these things need to be done. Uh, communication, training, marketing, uh, to make sure that we're launch ready and all the necessary testing has been completed. Um, in conclusion, as far as a successful launch, uh, you also need a launch plan. So having a roadmap is just the beginning, but depending on what you want to do for the launch, there should be a plan that supports all of the auxiliary activities that need to happen before the launch. Thank you so much for this time and for the answers. I enjoyed your insight in this process. Um, and thank you for coming to the interview. Thank you. Uh, how many, how many more, how many more p um, people do you have to interview in this process? Tell you the exact number. We do have um, at least 12. Okay. All right. Do you, do you have a timeline? Maybe you know um, an idea of expectations. How long the entire process will take? I don't have an exact timeline, but expect at least two to three weeks before you hear back from us. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye. For you.